Today's episode is brought to you by Omaze. Oh my gosh, we're finally doing an Omaze thing. It's gonna be a Jeep 2019 Wrangler Rubicon 4x4 with $40,000 of upgrades. It's a Rogue Mobile. Donate now at omaze.com slash rogue. Rogue Mobile. I know, right? Hot damn, the gang's all together. Did he read it yet? Read what? Oh, is there some, is there? We've had to instate some rules. Just saying. Uh, okay, all right, this is, I'm a legitimate bartender. I told you. <laughs> of the Georgia Berkelmans. Oh, turn, yeah, did you just? <laughs> <laughs> Sham is not gonna like that. <laughs> All right, we are back here at Parker Jazz Club with our favorite bartender, Trevor. Dude, it's been too long, I'm so excited. All right, explain to me what the heck is a shrub? It is a maceration, which means to soften or break down. You are gonna have a vegetable, herb, or root, or fruit, and then you're gonna break that down with its own sugars by adding sugar and then adding vinegar. And, and forgive me for being reductionist, we're creating the flavors that go in the snow cones, basically. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, exactly, tiger's blood, if you will. What kind of drinks do shrubs go in, remind us? The hot nutrient right now, which is a mocktail, but a lot of times you're gonna make kind of like a Ricky, a one-in-one -one where you just simply take, you have all your flavor, you have all your sugar you need, you simply add a spirit to it, maybe top it off with soda, don't even really have to do that most often, but the soda will kind of like, cut a little bit of the tinge out of the drink. So essentially, it's your drink, and then you're gonna uh, zhuzh it up booze. with a little bit of booze. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so shrubs have been around for like 4,000 years since ancient Roman times. Uh, they're vinegar-based in a lot of cases. They were popular during Prohibition as a mocktail because people couldn't drink and uh, lemonade was a little boring, so let's put some vinegar in there to give it a little bit of bite. You make your own shrubs. How do we do it? This one, it's a maceration of peach, apple, cinnamon, and habanero. Whoa, 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 whoa. Peach, apple, cinnamon, and habanero. I was not interested, and then it got very interesting <laughs> all at once. You'll like it even better when you know that it's called dead ass. Dead ass! ass. <laughs> because of peaches and butts. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> when it comes to shrubs, just know that it's gonna be three ingredients. What you wanna macerate with the sugar and with the vinegar. So I'm gonna core the fruit that I have today because we have apples and peaches. Okay. We don't want that nasty pit in there and we don't want you know the seeds or anything from the apple to get in there because it can affect the flavor. We're making this on our own, but do people buy off the shelf shrubs? Sure, when you are buying those shrubs, they are quality products, but to me, it's kind of like buying your own simple syrup. If you've got the time, you can make it yourself. Well, and I think that's one of the differences. If what you want to do is build a reputation for making handcrafted cocktails, you want as much as possible to be made by your own hands. Really, I find joy in this, and I have a lot of fun when I'm making this. Would Sunny Delight be a shrub? <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. I am not a chef, so y'all can keep your comments to yourself. I could burn cereal if you gave me the chance, but what you're gonna do is you're just gonna chop this up into little chunks, little bits, and let the sugar do its work once we get it all together. And when you say the sugar, are, I assume we're adding sugar? We're gonna be adding granulated sugar. You can add any kind of sugar. You can use coconut sugar, you can use brown sugar, sugar in the raw. Today I learned that coconut sugar is a thing. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing until the last year when I saw it and it was $8 a pound and I thought, nope. <laughs> You're like, you know what, it's not a thing. <laughs> not a thing this wallet can handle. However, for anyone who is thinking about diets or trying to stay away from sugar, there are, there are alternatives when it comes to shrubs. You can use the natural sugar from the fruits that you use, but you can also buy the uh, sugar alternatives to still make like, so, so, like so, so, Yeah, like, yes. or Splenda or whatever. Would, now, like that wouldn't be a crime against humanity or? No, it's not a crime against humanity. However, it is going to get expensive. Got it. Just kind of get it diced up into small little bits because it's about surface area too and how much sugar is hitting the fruit itself. Well, that's interesting. So if it is surface area, then, then there's a reason that you're picking roughly, what, one centimeter to one inch size cubes? Mm-hmm, exactly. You don't want it to break down too far because you can create too much viscosity with the syrup that comes out of it from the sugar breaking it down So we're too not much. doing something like we did with the Pruno where we're just making a mash. No, and you know, I'll do a, just kind of like chop it up here and there just to get it in the bag or get it into the pot. Okay, so we've diced up our peaches, what now? Next we're gonna core the apple and you just get a simple apple core. That's a thing. Wow. Today I learned there's an apple core. Me too. That's a thing. Wow. Gang puck, baby. I should probably eat apples. Yeah. Did that go straight into the trash? That was yes, magical. It did. You're like one of those flair bartenders. Oh, 
don't talk about <laughs> don't talk about those oh, days. Oh, you just dropped like a slur. That's amazing. No, no, <laughs> it's not a slur. It's a past life. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Okay, so we've got these diced up peaches and apples. Uh, what's next? Okay, so essentially we do have an equal proportion. They may not be completely equal, but it doesn't have to be. So next, since we're gonna be using the sous vide, which if y'all didn't take French class in high school, means in a vacuum. In a vacuum. Oh, that's what it means? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna put them in these uh, fun little space bags. I thought, man, the French came up with a word for boiling meat in a bag. Okay, so we bagged up our fruits, mm -hmm. and now you got some habaneros. Pretty Same easy. thing? Uh, yeah, but depending on the habanero, how fresh it is, uh, I have made uh, shrubs in the past that had uh, one full one. Sometimes I had two, but these seem to be pretty hot, so I'm just using a half one for this entire shrub. Okay. And it's gonna go in the bag with uh, the rest of the fruit. Little goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And then I do have some Vietnamese cinnamon bark. Vietnamese cinnamon, it's a little bit more potent than uh, regular cinnamon bark, so I like to use it as much as possible. Today I learned there's different types of cinnamon. <laughs> Today I learned that cinnamons have a national identity. <laughs> they're citizens of various <laughs> countries. Well, there's there's Madagascar cinnamon, there's Vietnamese cinnamon, and there's all kinds of different cinnamon. So we've got our cinnamon, we've got our peaches, we've got our apples, what's next? Don't forget the habanero, because now we're gonna go with the sugar. And, and the purpose of the sugar is what? Think ceviche. Think about how a citrus will break down the proteins of a fish. Mm -hmm. That's what this sugar is doing to this fruit right now. Got it. It's and, uh, helping to turn everything into a, a, a delicious soup. Exactly, and I eyeball it. I'm doing about roughly two cups of sugar to roughly two cups of fruit. It's not exact. You're making it too complicated. A little bit of yeast and some ketchup and uh... <laughs> You're done. Oh God, oh, it's splashing on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, there is one important step when you are sous vide. If you get all the sugar to the bottom of the bag, sometimes it doesn't cook correctly. So you do kind of want to Massage it around. Yeah. You, you want everything coated in a fairly even distribution of all the materials. Like an oleum saccharum. Sure. I, 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 we, we both will assume those are words. I'm not a doctor, so I'm just gonna take your word for it. <laughs> well, that... If you have oleum saccharum for more than four hours, you should call one, though. <laughs> Oleum saccharum is a lot like a maceration where you're essentially letting the product that you're using, whether it's a fruit or vegetable, break down on its own and use its juices to create the flavor that you want in a bag wrapped up like this, sealed, and just breaking down on its own. Got Pretty it. Pretty sure you made that up, but I'll let it slide. <laughs> Buy a dictionary. And now we're gonna pull the rest of the air out. Well, as much as you can, you don't have to worry about getting all of it out because once you put it in the sous vide with the warm water, that air is gonna escape the bag. That's a good point. So we're not doing something like with the pruno or any of the brewing or any of that stuff. It's not the, the type of thing where any amount of oxygen is gonna be deadly since we know we're just gonna cook it out. Yeah, exactly. So it's got a pretty good tight seal on it. See here where we have a little too much sugar? Mm -hmm. This is where you kind of want to go back and work it in as much as possible. And you're not doing like we did with the pruno. You're not necessarily mashing to get a consistent blend. You want it to be very heterogeneous. Yeah, exactly. You don't you don't want too many areas of uh, sugar that wouldn't get cooked by the fruit. So. And granted, I did kind of get lazy there. This is what big chunks will do to you. Okay. This is why surface area is important, having small chunks that suck up a lot of it, but it's still gonna work in the end. So we're cooking this next? Yeah, so this is a sous vide here, which I've already prepped with the water. You're gonna place whatever you're cooking in the tub here with it. Mm -hmm. The sous vide keeps it at a constant temperature for however long you have to set it. With this shrub, it takes about four hours to cook it completely, and it will keep it at 60 degrees Celsius for that amount of time. This is the first time I've wished for a magical floating thing to translate that into Fahrenheit, because I don't know what 60 degrees Celsius is. I had to look it up when I got this thing. The great thing about these sous vides is it's a safe way to cook. You're not gonna burn down a house. No, and this thing connects to Wi-Fi. What? I can be at the bar working, realize I'm about to run out of shrub, I can start a new batch at home just by getting on my phone and hitting the app. Best thing is, this is called the Jewel. Yeah? It asks you to name it. Mine is Run the. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So I assume there's more steps coming up later, but but once this is run for four hours, what what's the texture? Does anything substantially change? It literally softens, as the definition says, but it becomes, you see this pliable fruit in here, but it's also covered in juice, and the sugar has kind of dissolved. So a shrub is really a simple syrup without the vinegar yet. Okay, and, and I, why are we adding vinegar? In the cocktail world, what you want is a balanced, layered drink. Vinegar will often add that missing element. Shrubs are great for doing that to a cocktail. Also, the vinegar will keep it shelf stable for much longer than say a simple syrup. Like a strawberry syrup, 
it may last a week or two. You put vinegar in it, it could last six months on the shelf without refrigerating it. It is so remarkable to me. There was some economic study that I read where all they did was they said it was a special beer. It's the same beer they always had. All they did was add some apple cider vinegar and everybody said it tastes better. Everybody thought that they would like it less, but when you didn't tell everybody, everybody liked it better. Also, vinegar is a great way to hydrate. What? What? This yeah. Well, back in the old days, in ancient times, they would actually add uh, vinegar or sour wine to their water because they didn't really have good water purification uh, abilities. And so they would put the sour wine in there and it would kill the bacteria so that they could drink the water. After four hours, this is cooked. It's done. You'll pull it out. You'll have this nice thick syrup that's in there. You are going to want to fine sift this, whether it be through a mesh strainer or a cheesecloth. You're just going to get it all the chunks and all the syrup out. So you don't want anything that's gonna be cloudy and, and, and tenderly swimming around in there. This is the consistency you're looking Whoa. for. Yeah, no, that's very uh, finely filtered. So you're gonna be able to get that from this. Yes, and your last step to make it an actual shrub is adding the vinegar. And I'll bet I know how much. If we have two cups of the fruit and we have two cups of the sugar, my guess is two cups of the vinegar. Absolutely. I am a legitimate bartender. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Keep in mind, you can use any kind of vinegar you want. I like to use apple cider vinegar and just the basic stuff. You don't need the raw or the mother's vinegar. You can use rice vinegar, sweetened vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Today any I learned you want. mother's vinegar is a thing. Never heard of it. So I'm gonna want a mocktail. Brian's gonna want a cocktail. What can we make with it? The best mocktail you've ever had. And I'm just gonna make you something that's simplistic, fun, and Sounds refreshing. Sounds an awful lot like you said, awesome and some garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and some, I'll, I guess, poor Jim Beam in there. <laughs> You're apparently the legitimate bartender. <laughs> you tell me, Brian. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah, that one's pretty simple. I just threw some whiskey in it along with the uh, dead ass shrub. What is this one? This is the, the road rash blueberry shrub mixed with uh, non-alcoholic ginger beer. Yeah, and it's gonna have a tinge of radish in there as well. Okay, well. This is me trying to toast. There you go, there boom. You go. Oh, that's great. Wow, it's got a bite. It's so remarkable. I never would have thought that I would want any kind of vinegar, anything, but I, I, otherwise I think all those fruits would have been too sweet for me to enjoy it. And between the whiskey and the vinegar, it really strikes an awesome balance and there's just enough of that right kick with the spice. Yeah, and this is an amazing mocktail. It's got that bite from the ginger brew, but it's also got the sweetness of uh, the blueberries. All right, Trevor, where can people follow your shenanigans? Twitter, Barstool Theory, Instagram, Barstool Theory, and wherever uh, Rumplements is sold. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I believe that That's part. That's true. <laughs> That's true. In spite of their straining order. <laughs> hmm. So we're giving away Brian's Jeep. Well, I, I wish. Then, then I could buy this awesome other Jeep. <laughs> <Is> it... <laughs> Dude, this is amazing. If you've not heard of Omaze, they're doing good by giving the kind of rewards that normally are reserved for billionaires, but they democratize the whole process. Everybody donates and everybody gets a chance to win an awesome once in a lifetime experience. In this case, it's a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4x4 with $40,000 of upgrades. And you get to work with the Collins brothers to pick those upgrades. You've got 40 grand to customize it. Put a big fat modern rogue logo on the side. Yes. Also, we need, a, we need to pick a logo. Here's the important thing is every single donation goes to benefit Folds of Honor. It's a fantastic organization that contributes to educational scholarships for the children and spouses of fallen service members. Yeah, the best part is you get the satisfaction of knowing you're better than everybody else by donating to a good cause and you also get the hope and joy every time you go to sleep of knowing you now have a chance to win a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4x4 with $40,000 of upgrades. Yes. You know that thing you hear about where like somebody wins a car in a game show and then they get stuck with taxes, title, license, and they have to write a check and they're like, what am I, just buying a car? It's hardly worth it. Not happening this time. They cover all of that. Go to omaze.com forward slash rogue and enter to win. Get the sweet, sweet rogue mobile. You have to call it that. It's implied. You don't have to, but it's also, implied. Then you have to go on a road trip. I mean, and then if you have to cool. come visit us here at MRHQ. I mean, that, part, us, I, that part I think is a definite. You gotta let us drive it around too. He might have to learn how to drive a manual. Shh. Man. Thankfully there are no photos or videos. Mm. Did you have the hippie hippie shakes? Yeah, no. were you dealing about blackjack at the same time? No, but I did knock myself out on a New Year's Eve party when I tried to flip a bottle behind my head. And it just bonked you on the noggin and you went out? Yeah, just like flat, just face down. I would tip you so big if you knocked yourself unconscious.